Get it started with a little revelry brew per use. Per use. Shout out to them boys, crushing it. Just got done with their uh, four year anniversary video. Mm-hmm. It's about to be awesome. That'd be lit. It was so lit. Live woke. <laughs> All those things. Don't get don't get too off the rails over there, Jay Wayne. It's early in the evening. It is. Could it be is dropping lit live and woke back to back to back. Well, those are what Nick Chubb is. All those things. Is that what it is? The about trifecta. To, about to get into a little Nick Chubb. Man, is that guy just fun to watch, talk about, think about. I would say he's well above a mid level boss. Oh, he for sure. He's been promoted. <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, he came into the league as a mid level boss. He did. He was drafted as a mid level boss, and then he I got mean, that, that prom- high second round pick. Mm. That's that's he was drafted as a boss to, as a boss regular boss, but a boss in waiting. Okay, or in training. Yeah, right. Because Carlos High was going to be there, mm-hmm. and you were like, man, we we were strongly pro Nick Chubb here, big time. And we were willing to wait, and all of a sudden, he only had to be a boss in waiting for a couple of weeks. It right. probably felt forever for the you know the high drafters, but he definitely he started off slow, right? You watch him in the preseason week one, he was just getting stuffed, right? But he's out there with second, and third stringers. It's his first game ever. Oh, it was horrible. He was pressing. It was it wasn't horrible. It wasn't as horrible like when I, when I say it was horrible. The fallout, the fantasy mm-hmm. chitter chatter. The, 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 the ridiculousness on Twitter, the Twitter right. chitter chatter. Golly. Over the top. It was, see, this dude's not any good. He's 230 right. pounds. He's too big. It's Sluggish. A, it's, a, it's a small man's game these days. It, I was like, it was driving me nuts. We came on here and was like, this is Don't a lot worry. better than it looked. Don't worry about it. Don't listen to these people. It's one week. He got it rolling a little bit in the preseason. Doesn't, doesn't do much into the regular season. It's the Carlos Hyde show. You get to week four. First the Raiders, he busts off a couple of ridiculous runs. First the Raiders, but you can't take a couple of forty yard two to housers away from anybody. Yeah, right. I mean they weren't they weren't tanking at that point, I don't think. They were still trying to win in week four. You would you would hope, but I I think it's pretty pretty obvious that they were tanking since day one. That's fair. <laughs> but it still took trading Carlos Hyde away to get this guy some more work. And man, has he literally ran with this opportunity well i mean that it was a light switch i mean even still like even week one two like that was three carries 21 yards two carries 14 yards that's seven yards a carry obviously the number is a small small, small sample size carry, though. about as small a sample size as it gets mm-hmm. you know but you know it's he he had it and then the big week against the, the tanking raiders can't take that of those runs away and like you said and then boom carlos hyde gets traded and it's the nick chubb show 18 carries for 80 and a touch. Next week against Steelers. Steelers did come in there. Did, they did go to travel to the Steelers, and I believe it was like Steelers minus six or seven or something like that on the line. And Steelers handed them, but still got 18 carries and that you're lo- and two catches, which you know you're looking for that usage. And then the next week against the Chiefs, 22 carries catch. Last week, 20 carries, three catches. And you when you're getting workhorse usage like that. That's really what you're looking for, Absolutely. and then let it play out as it as it may. When you got a 230 pound back, that's a stud physically. At, you know, we've been saying it for months now about how if he didn't blow his knee out, we talked about that in the mock it up before we fuck it up. We talked about that in the running back breakdown, the rookie running back breakdown in February about yeah. how if Nick Chubb didn't blow his knee out two years ago. He's right there along he, with he, Barkley. Well, he probably would have come out with Leonard Fournette was what I was saying. Right. So it wouldn't have been Nick Chubb, Saquon Barkley, at two freak athletes because Nick Chubb without the injury probably would have come out the year before last with Fournette. And he's probably right there as far as right. highly regarded. Exactly. And so, But look at this man. Look at what he's doing. Did, yeah, so check out. Since week seven, look listen at these, to these stats. freaking numbers. All right, these are the He's first in all these categories. All right, He's first in carries with 78. First in yards with 406. First in first downs. First in 10-plus yard runs. Second in the league in yards after contact with 4.1, which totals 477 yards after contact. Now, I know he had a 92-yard touchdown run. Sure. And that kind of skews those stats a little bit. Well, I will beat that that stat up. But the if you think about, but it, I mean, think about Rashad Penny in college. He had plenty of ninety yard touchdown runs. It skewed the five yards per carry after contact. That's why he's so good. Oh my <laughs> gosh! The YouTube video we put out about is Rashad Penny a bust? The week he does good, man, all those people just come out of the woodworks. They're, Piling on. 
Loving See, I told it. you, I told you so. Well, the, the the what's cool about those stats right there is that he's number one in first downs, and a 92-yard run only gets you one first down right. stat. So you check off a, a one first down for that 92-yard run touchdown, only gets you one first down. So that's pretty cool what well, he's here's, been doing. Here's my favorite stat. 25 tackles broken. That's seventh in the league right now amongst running backs, and he wasn't even getting the work. Right. If you if that's I like that. Okay, so he's been get Carlos got traded four games ago. So in the four games that Carlos has been gone, he's basically averaging twenty carries a game. Right. The four game the one, two, three, four, five, six games before that, six times three, eighteen, might not have been all the way two of those were twos. So basically my man's got five games worth of carries. Right. Because those all those games with Carlos Hyde, you add them up, they're really on only one of these games. By the way, it would have had like 130 something yards and two touchdowns because of the Raiders game. But so, five games in, we're ten games into the NFL schedule. NFL schedule. He's only played five, mm -hmm. and he's seventh in the league in broken tackles. What else do you need, my man? You can't tackle this. What dude. else do you need? Business decisions, right? Are being made, right? Because when you, attempting to tackle this, you dude. came in here and you were like, "What in the world happened to all the defensive backs well, to we the watched, Falcons for the ninety-two yard right. run?" He's he's sprint because I wanted to be like the second gear, which I believe he has is the most impressive thing about him, in my opinion. I'll get into that in a second, but like he's accelerating past all these dudes, but then you look and it's like it's Grady Jarrett and it's that uh, AJ Hawk looking linebacker fifty, right? And, a, another big dude, and there, there's no chance those guys are catching. I'm like, where are these defensive backs that are able to business track decision. down? Business. Right, he already busted them off. Right, the business. They were like, hey, uh, look, a bird. Right, you know, they're oh, what coach? Did you say something? <laughs> did you need me? Y'all boys asking for my. Why are you on my name mid play, coach? <laughs> yeah. Did somebody? Did you hear a whistle? Did you a whistle? Business decision. Business decision. Chubb's got ahead of speed. They were like, mm, I'm hungry. This cat is so big. Let me get some water. And so elusive. The change of direction is is awesome. He's got some shimmy. Like the movie puts on defensive backs in the second level is just ridiculous. The power and the tackle breaking ability is very impressive, but it's that it's that second gear in the open field. And like the short area burst is is impressive, but when he gets in the open field and he hits that gear, like that that touchdown against the Raiders where he just pulled away from everybody. And there right. was defensive backs in the frame right. there. Nobody was catching up with him. How, how does a guy that big just kick it in, hit the NOS button, basically? Turbo. Because he only ran a 4.52 at the combine. But I feel like he's getting stronger as this year is going on. He's getting faster. He just looks bigger and faster than everybody out there. You can't tackle this dude. Can't tackle him. And I think it might have been... Maybe Brian Baldinger that put a two-minute video up on Twitter. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on Twitter that drains me, but I go mm -hmm. for the stats and I go for the breakdown videos and mm -hmm. all that good stuff. And it was I, – I don't know if it was the 92-yard run, but one of the runs where he was approaching the line and there was a dude and he had to jump to the left and then right after that he had to jump back to the right to get in the hole and Brian Baldinger was just like slowing it down. And, you know, it kind of drains me because people pull it back two or three times to show you in slow-mo. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, play the play one time so I can see this in real speed. And then come back with the slow mo so I can see what you're talking about. But never, I digress. It was a good little video, and it, his hips to get his hips following his eyes mm -hmm. was basically what I don't know if Brian Bollinger put that together in the video, but that's what I thought he was getting. I thought I thought I thought that's what he was trying to say was Nick Chubb saw the guy that he needed to get around. His hips got him around, and he saw the hole that he needed to get to, and his hips got him back into the hole, and then fast forward from there. And it's just like when you got the athlete that Nick Chubb is, and you got the vision that Nick Chubb has, I mean, you put those couple of those and, things and together. And the line is playing pretty good. Sure. Well, I mean, everybody knows the Browns have had a good line for a while, and they've hit some hiccups this year, and they have some down games. And What's going to happen when you lose an all-time, all-pro, all-everything left tackle? This is true. This is true. And there's just – it's it's such – that's why the teams call, talk about the NFL season is like – first quarter at first four games of the year second quarter next four games of the year because i mean this stuff is brutal mm -hmm. these guys are out there just it's a gladiator sport everybody at this time of the year everybody's hurt especially those teams that are just now getting to a bye week they've been you know you get to a team that has had a bye week within the last week or two they're a lot fresher than somebody that's been playing nine ten straight games and so you got you you got the it's a war of attrition and who's the healthiest that can come to the, to the game on sunday versus if you got if you're healthy and you got some good X's and O's. So now the Browns 
fired the coaches a couple hmm. two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and now hashtag coaching matters. Then you got play you just mixing it up in the backfield. Is was it Freddie Kitchens, the new offensive coordinator, and that he's the running backs coach Bruce Bruce Arians disciple, and just like who there I've heard rumors of Bruce Arians was said. The only team he would come out of retirement to coach would be the Browns. That would be fun. That would be pretty cool. We could, you know, cross our fingers and, right. and hope for that. But for Baker's sake, right? Yeah, for everybody's sake, right? Jarvis, give me some, you know, give me some some high end, top tier coaching talent because it talent co- coaching talent matters. If you don't believe me, just look at the Rams and the Chiefs and all, and the and the Bears. Bears. Anybody, anybody paying attention to this stuff? Or maybe the uh, Titans even. Right. Want to go out on a limb there? Well, you the Titans went to a bye week too, just like I was talking about two weeks ago. The Titans go into a bye, come out and just shellac the, the Cowboys by two touchdowns that they were almost a touchdown underdog. They beat them by two, t- two touchdowns. They're a touchdown underdog this week to the Patriots. And they beat them down to, I mean, blow them out. They didn't yeah. even have to play in the second half. They just Mm-mm. manhandled the Patriots. And everybody wants to say, as well, it's well, Brady's old. It had nothing to do with Mm-mm. Brady. They, the Titans just came out there and whooped them. So, anyway, the Browns now, they with the two weeks removed from the coaching changes, and this offense is just freeing up. They, they're protecting Baker. They're bring, you know, putting. Now, they did hit the Falcons, and the Falcons, you know. Well, they, they hit the Chiefs. The Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, all right. Fair. Fair you point. Hit, hit two of the easier defenses to right. play against. Chiefs on the road, mind you. You don't go right. into Arrowhead and get the same defense. It's different. You get you go play True. at the Chiefs, get a different different defense. That that crowd, they're, they're mm-hmm. putting them up against Seattle. Um, but yes, they did play. They did get the Falcons and the Chiefs, which is probably at home, two in a row. Best case scenario to fire your coach and see those two defenses roll in. But yeah, I mean they hand. I mean it was still a game in the third quarter. You got a turnover against the Falcons, and then you get punch it in, and then Chubb goes for ninety two yards, and it looks like a blowout. But the Browns will take it, man. They Absolutely, didn't, they didn't have to go to overtime, and they won by more than a field goal. They didn't have to, you know. Have, they have never felt that way. Right. I, I no. bet Browns fans. They didn't have to kick a field goal with the time running out. I got to give it to Browns fans because if you like, we don't go out. I don't go out in public too much and watch these games. We, we usually hear watching four TVs. But Casey's been out of town, and I went out and watched some games. Like Browns fans are out there, and they're watching the whole game, and they're just like sulking. And that's just what they know. That's just what they know. They know loss. Yeah. So I can't imagine what they must have felt like being up like this. Sure. In the middle of the third true, quarter. True. Knowing this game's in the bag. Look, it's good for them, man. Looking they, at the scoreboard and like, like, is that. this real? Then right. Is there a, Should be flipped. Right. Is this flipped? Good this, for them, man. Did they mess something up? And they took good, it to them at home. I like good it. Good for the Browns. Good for Nick Chubb. All right. So obviously we love Nick Chubb. Love Nick Chubb. We've been telling you to buy Nick Chubb for weeks. If you listen to this show, you've you've at least tried to acquire this dude because we've been telling you to go buy him for whatever it took to get him. And now it's going to be really hard. You can't forget a first round pick. The first round pick's not getting it done. No. And so I've I've been trying to figure out, you know, I knew we were going to come on here. I knew we were going to talk a ton about the Browns and and, and and how awesome Nick Chubb is. Well, like, what does that do for your dynasty fantasy football team? How can we equate this? So let's let's throw a couple players up at least. Maybe try and do a little bit of a ranking here. We we got uh, DLF's ADP pulled up uh, for uh, what is it November, and uh, we, we're sorted by the running backs. And I don't you know I don't think, although I have seen on Twitter. <laughs> A bunch of stats where they compare Nick Chubb to Saquon Barkley, and all of his all of Nick Chubb's stats are like better than Barkley's. Not the receptions, obviously. Well, yeah, they want to leave that part out. <laughs> uh, but they're like, why is there so much hi- hype around Saquon, and, and Nick Chubb doesn't get the hype? And it's like, are you trying to say that Nick Chubb's better than Saquon? What do you, what is your point of this tweet? That's why I hate Twitter. Yeah. Uh, because they probably just want a bunch of comments of blah, 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 click ah. clickbait, right? Clickbait, killing me. But so, uh, give me Saquon, right? I'm not. Obviously. I love Nick Chubb, obviously. Got to take Saquon. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, you got to take Saquon, and we live in a, pay, a PPR world. PPR world. It's a. It's it. Uh, not only is Saquon. And I am a material girl. Not, right. Not only does is Saquon get another hundred total yards this week, and he's on pace to do things that only like Eric Dickerson, Ladanian Thompson type running backs has ever done. Marshall Falk. He's up in those those guys that catch balls get. 
you know, passing yard. He's, he's a total a yards. Team, man. He's a total yards kind of guy when it comes to the passing. Cat, you know, catching passes. Dominant in both categories. Very dominant. Very dominant on a terrible team. So get out of my face. Exactly. I mean, Saquon is is he is the generational talent. Right. And then you add to the fact that Eli Manning loves to dump it off because he ain't trying to get hit. Mm-hmm. It's a perfect world for fantasy points for right. Saquon right now. Right. So it's not. There's. I can't can't get down with comparing the two. Right. All right. So Todd Gurley, Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, Ezekiel Elliott, Kareem. Hunt, we're not putting Chubb above any of those guys, right? Absolutely not. But this basically what we just did was we pulled up the DLF ADP rankings and what the average draft position on DLF for last month, and then sorted by running backs. So all the, the I said all that. Did you? Yeah, yeah I wasn't listening. Yeah, that yeah. dude, oh, I definitely don't listen to you. What you have to say. <laughs> Just I know. kidding. No, I know. I was. I don't know what I was doing over here. Right. I was trying to sort. I was. I said only up. running backs. You set them up. I. I say even said we sorted by running backs. Count Normally, <laughs> count it. Normally, you set it up so I can knock them down. We both set them up. There's two sets of things up. Two setups. We better <laughs> deliver here. Somebody better knock something down. All right, Christian McCaffrey. I'm, I'm that gonna, one, My bad. I'm a hold Christian. You got the PPR exactly right. You, we we catch balls. We get points. Melvin Gordon. I'll take Melvin. Got to. Joe Mixon? You going uh, Nick Chubb or Joe Mixon? I think I got to go Joe Mixon. I be, love Nick Chubb, but Joe Mixon has Le'Veon Bell type talent. Right. He can break tons of tackles. He's super smooth. He's super fast. And he's so good in the passing game. Great in the passing game. And that's, I got, I'm, I got to stay in Joe Mixon as well. Yeah. Just because of the same. The two weeks ago against the Chiefs, and I know it's against the Chiefs, and you're chasing points and everything, and that was two weeks ago when Duke Johnson had his coming out party. But, you know, Nick Chubb got you 20 carries for 87 yards and a catch and, a, and, and five yards. So basically got you 10 points. And that's obviously this week he has a 92-yard run, and that was half. I even tried to set that up when, all before we started here. I was like, well, what would have happened without the 92-yard run? And we had tried to figure out, it was in the middle of the third quarter, so it was so much game to be let, and that was basically them started to blowing out the Falcons. So I'm not trying to take anything away from what Nick Chubb's doing. Right. All, like I said, all you can ask for a guy is to get 20 carries, but this is a PPR world we live in, and if you can get that that hybrid, if you can get the guy that does both, he's going to give you a safer floor, and then he's going to give you that ceiling like – you can't count on Nick Chubb to give you 30 points a week because he's not going to always get enough touchdowns to do it. But somebody like even Carryon Johnson had an off game this week because the Bears were blowing out the Lions, but and he only got 50 yards on the ground, but he still got 25, 26 fantasy points because he caught six balls. That's another t- that's another touchdown, you know. Right. So, but it, Chubb's coming on strong. Week eight, he had three targets, nine he had only had one, and then week ten another three uh, for three. Um, I will say he's only has 10 targets, but when they throw him a catchable ball, he makes a catch I and he looks good. Completely agree. We said that in the, the quote, offseason. The quote we have here is he has hands. Right. He ha- that's, he can catch. He has hands. And we, he looks good doing it, in my opinion, agreed. but he does not get in the targets. Yeah. So that doesn't help here. That doesn't, that's, that's the caveat. That's basically what's separating him from these top, top tier running backs. Completely agree. So. But I mean, it's it's he's he's young. He's a rookie. Baker Mayfield's young. He's a rookie. They're figuring this offense out. I think Baker's only going to get better. I think this offense is only going to get better. And I think everyone's only going to get better. So I think I we I agree with all that too. And Chubb's a rookie, and he's twenty two years old, and he's gotten he he even though we said time after time it's not as bad as it looks in the preseason. It he's gotten better each and every week, and you can see it. I mean. Four games in a row with 20, 20 carries. You can see this man transitioning to the NFL speed. He is NFL speed. It's just the game. Everything opens up and closes so much faster. It's just not an issue for him. He, he's getting better each and every week. And I completely agree with the way, what you're trying to say there with this a young rookie quarterback, rookie running back, new team, basically. They There's brought, room for improvement. That's what I'm saying. For and the I whole think team. will. Not only him, but the team. The sure. offense. Well, obviously. But I think I'm, Nick, Ford's, Nick Nick Chubb's PPR floor, specifically, I think, has plenty of room to grow. And I don't want to just yeah. say he's not a pass catching back yet. He just hasn't gotten. Well, it's just, there's, there's, you can catch the balls. There's, there's, you can, he has hands. That hashtag, mm-hmm. you know, married to the game, he has hands, right? <laughs> but he's not a natural. Like, 
Carry on Johnson's a natural. Like, he just hasn't been given the chance. It, well, well, there's a, all right. So there's Georgia a, didn't throw to their backs. You're okay. Then he had another good guy there. Uh, Auburn didn't really throw to their backs either. Carry on had a ton of catches. Well, because he's a natural. If you're, if he's, okay. a, you know, <laughs> like if you're, if you're a magnet to the football, when the quarterback's got it, they'll throw it to you. And he's a natural. Like Duke Johnson is there. That's his PPR ceiling and floor problems. Is Duke Johnson is there? Duke Johnson, natural pass catcher. But they're putting Duke in the slot and, 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 they and need working to. him around. They, need, they got to wide receiver Riddick, issues. What they're doing over there, right? They got, so, they got wide receiver issues. They need to. All right, I'll take David Johnson and Le'Veon Bell over Nick Chubb. Yeah. What about Leonard and Fournette? That, let's just pause right there because somebody listening to this is going to be like, "Oh, I'll take Nick Chubb over Le'Veon Bell" because Le'Veon Bell's got that stink on him. It's just hard. like, first of all, if you drafted him this year. PPR, I mean, Bummer. PPR, Dynasty, Redraft, any of those, Anything. all of those above, you're upset and you are you got a little hate in your heart. So right. <laughs> it's just... If you have hate in your heart, let it out. Le'Veon Bell has just got you really upset with him right now in, in fantasy football. So, and I'm not mad at him personally. I don't know what's going on. And I don't, I've never been offered $17 million to do anything in my entire life and never will. Right. So I can't even relate. Right. And nor do I have to go get tackled by guys that want to rip my leg off on a consistent basis either. So I'm not going to pretend like I even know what's going on. I'm mm-hmm. just playing my game here and trying to do the best of my abilities. And if and I'm going to play Dynasty in the next three to five years. And and yeah, Nick, Le'Veon Bell's 26, Nick Chubb's 22. But again, Le'Veon Bell could get eight catches to this game and, catch, and get 100 yards rushing and get three total touchdowns. Nick Chubb, maybe two catches, maybe a, maybe a touchdown or two, hundred yards. You know, it's just there's that ceiling there that only a couple people in the league possess, and Le'Veon Bell's one of them. So even though Le'Veon Bell's a couple years older, and he's got me really upset fan, in fantasy terms right now, I'm still taking Le'Veon Bell over Nick Chubb going into uh, obviously. So rest if you of had the a season, bad team, Le'Veon Bell's going to give you zeros. So if you had a bad team this year and you got Nick Chubb on it. And maybe a contender is sitting there with Le'Veon with no, no nothing to do. Great call. I'm switching. You maybe make that trade offer. You try if, and get Le'Veon Bell. Yes. You you send me Le'Veon Bell for Nick Chubb right now, and I don't have a chance to go to the playoffs where Nick Chubb can help me this year because obviously Le'Veon's not going to. Right. And I just, if this all about starting over next year and who's going to help me out the best, I'll take Le'Veon Bell. Yeah. I think I agree, and we're we're going down this list. So like these aren't these aren't our rankings. We're just calling them out as it goes down the DLF list here, right? Um, Trying to find somewhere to maybe stick Nick Chubb in because right now he's at fifteen, which to me is just like the influx of the running back talent to push Nick Chubb all the way down to fifteen says something. Sure. Like, and this is exactly why we were trying to get all of our guys, listeners, guys and gals, listeners to. Hammer some running backs this year, so you could have two or three of these guys because they're absolutely different. You know, they're difference, difference makers, makers for sure. Yeah. Um, All right, Leonard Fournette. There's the difference for me right there. Obviously, Leonard Fournette came back healthy this week, and he got some. He got five or six catches, and the Jags are like, we. And it's more of a product of anti Blake Bortles right. that Leonard Fournette has five or six catches because they're like, we don't want. I. That they did not want Bortles to lose that game for them. And there was just no chance they were going to put Bortles in harm's way. And it was Leonard Fournette, Leonard Fournette, Leonard Fournette. And he had a good game. He had a great game for stats-wise. He, you know, he, uh, the yards per carry. He accumulated some stats, if you will, and but it ended up being a great uh, fantasy day. I'm taking Nick Chubb over Fournette at this point. They do the same thing. They're b- both awesome pounders of the football. But give me the guy that just hasn't had these leg injuries carrying on for two years now you know they're he's got the ankle basically I mean, the same age Fournette's a year older i is he yeah Fournette's 23 i mean it may by the months i'm just going by the numbers 8. here but just 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 hear me out for a second if the if the browns were in as bad of a spot as the jags were Fournette's like a whole year older than chubb okay holy shit if the browns were in a see they would have come out together Fournette didn't stay his senior year. They would have mm. come out together if Chubb didn't blow his knee out. Wow. Um, so they would be you so would, young still. Yeah. And Fournette would still obviously be a year older because that's how that works. And we'd mm-hmm. be talking about how great Chubb is and how young he is. But he blew his knee out and he didn't come out to this year. Um, if the Browns were in as bad a shape as the Jags are with quarterback, which they're not because he obviously just took Baker 1-1 and he's looking good. But if the Browns needed to force feed 
Chubb the ball even through the air to protect their quarterback situation because the defense is ready to cast Bortles off the team. The defense and the offense probably. Mm -hmm. Everybody not named Blake Bortles is ready to kick him off the team. And I'm he sure probably he probably is like, like oh, just give me another couple checks. I'm out of here. You know, so – and but the prob problem for Nick Chubb is that he has Duke Johnson. So and Duke Johnson much better than TJ Yeldon at saying throw me the ball, I'm a natural pass catcher. What I'm trying to say is, I'll take Chubb. In the meantime, in the short term, there's a, there's a chance that Fournette catches some balls and has a little PPR to him here because the Jaguars are so hell bent on keeping this quarterback from throwing interceptions. It's run, run, check down, run, run, check down, quarterback scramble, short crosser. And then, oh, we actually hit Dante Moncrief for a throw. So, and you know, I just feel like Chubb's just what, – what have you done for me lately? Chubb's not been hurt. That's that's all. That's that, But I got to go with the guy that hasn't been – Leonard Fournette missed games last year. When he's on the field, he's awesome. And we have beat the drum for Leonard Fournette around here with everybody hating on Leonard Fournette. We've said we're, we are pro Leonard Fournette and I'm pro Leonard Fournette. But when you miss a half a season like this, you, it just casts out. And when you just have to look out for your, obviously you have to look out for your starting lineup and putting points on the board for your fantasy team. But at the same time, it's kind of like the Alshon Jeffrey, Jeffrey effect, you know, there's half the guys in your league, no matter how good Al Alshon Jeffrey catches on for the second half of the year, they wouldn't give you anything for him right. because they're scared of him because for two years he was on and off the question question mark tag and in and out of the lineup and this and that. Fournette's on that transit. He's on that path of the Alshon Jeffrey soft tissue, you know, and I said it last year, he's almost too big and too fast to be able to do what he does. Uh, you when know, he's doing it when he's doing it for for his ankle, for, it's too much torque. And Casey, had, I remember that exact same conversation. I was kind of explaining that. And Casey comes over the top and is like, "He's so big and he's moving so fast, and, and the left to right, even not only just north and south, left to right, too much torque on that ankle." And I'll just take I'll just take Nick Chubb because he's just been he's more solid right now, from head to toe. All right, we're we're running long on Nick Chubb here. But I want to do. I want to just get a couple more names out there. Would you take Nick Chubb over any of these guys? James Conner, Dalvin Cook, or Carry On? Woo! That's a list. I know. What a list! All right. So you told me I'm running long. I'm all. I'm taking Carry On over Chubb, and that might be hot. Um, I'm just it's fairly hot. Same thing. Same, same thing. Just a natural. It's a PPR game for me, and Chubb. Couple more points than than uh, carry on this week and carry on barely got the ball. If the Lions got a pass interference in the end zone, it was first and goal. Legarrette Blunt stuffed two times in a row, third and goal. They bring in carry on Johnson. He jumps over the pile in the end zone, and hopefully the coaches are like, you know what, this is ridiculous. Let's just carry on's a monster in the red Maybe zone. They just wanted to Give burn the some time. By there was there it was fourth and Legarrette Blunt getting nothing. Right, just burning the yeah. yeah. So, the, so the Bears offense couldn't come back on and embarrass him again. I can see that. It's a good point. <laughs> Fourth All and right, two. Blunt, go out there and get nothing. Fourth and two. They do a toss little pitch to the left. Carry on takes it to towards the side. There's somebody in the backfield. As soon as he pitches it and he breaks a tackle, gets a first down. It's third down, running towards somebody in the in the back in the backfield again, trying to blow the play up. He's he strings it all the way out to the to the sideline and just shoots upfield at the last second to get the first down. This dude's a monster. I'm taking the I'm taking carry on over Chubb, but you can't go wrong with either one of them. Chubb is Chubb, Chubb's twenty two, carry on twenty one, even younger. Um, not that that really matters when you're in low twenties, but just to, just to say, uh, Dalvin Cook, um, you want to talk about the Leonard Fournette, Alshon Jeffrey, soft tissue for you know effect. Dalvin Cook is w wavering in some people's eyes, not in mine. I said it last week. I think this might have been on the Patreon show. Maybe it was on the public show. They've Latavius Murray was supposed to be the fifty fifty split for the Vikings this year because he played well down the stretch when Dalvin Cook got hurt. Week one got here. Dalvin Cook was on the field. Bang, Dalvin Cook show. The Vikings, it was pass to Dalvin Cook, run with Dalvin Cook, pass to Dalvin Cook, run with Dalvin Cook. It's going to be the Dalvin Cook show when he's back out there for sure. Oh, but but uh, Latavius is going to be the goal linebacker because why would they switch up what they've been doing? <laughs> yeah, get out of my face with I like Latavius that Joe Murray. Public you got going on over there. Like, uh, this is what you do with Latavius Murray. You wait a few weeks. When Dalvin Cook starts crushing and he's not to be found, Latavius Murray, that is. I know where you're going with this. Dalvin like is just crushing because yep. Dalvin's a man, and I think you should go try and get 
as much Dalvin as you can right now. If you take away that 70-yard carry, uh, his yards per carry wasn't very good last week. <laughs> like, <laughs> what the fuck? Are you serious? You're going to negate the 70-yard carry yeah. to give me yards per carry. That's what's on Twitter. Yeah. That's why I don't go on Twitter. But you wait three weeks, and then you go buy Latavius real cheap because he's probably not going to be a Viking next year. Real cheap. He's on the end of his just a one two year deal. He's out. Okay, probably won't be around. But then he could go somewhere else and be a decent little back. So wait a couple of weeks, then go buy Latavius Murray. Right now, go pounce on Dalvin Cook. And I'm with and, you. and I got a little nice little buyer's window conspiracy here for a second. I got a little theory because they go play at Chicago this week, the worst field in the league. Um, Soldier Field, not great, worst in the league. Chicago, maybe the best defense in the league against running backs. So, And I do believe that Dalvin Cook will have enough catches this week for people to realize he's a PPR monster. But if for any chance you are given one more week of buy window for Dalvin Cook, just consider yourself lucky right? and pounce if you can. Pounce now if you can. If right. you can. Yeah. Like, we've been telling our uh, – we we said this last week. We've had our – we've helped a handful of guys on our Patreon show and our members through the chats and the – and the question and answer portion of things acquire some Dalvin Cook. And if you if you didn't see the seventy yard run and you're just going by what somebody says, if if somebody says, well, it was blocked well and he wasn't touched, just go watch it. You can go get a clip of it. I'm sure you can find it somewhere on YouTube if you don't have Game Pass to get pull it up. If you can't see the vision that Dalvin Cook had and the the zero hesitation. The ball hits his hands from staff from from uh not Stafford but Kirk Kirk with a K hard K hard K he he gets the ball in his hands and this man is the definition of shot out of a cannon through this hole and it's just a minor weave because it is good blocking I'm not saying it's not good blocking it was a good hole but there was zero hesitation and it was shot out of a cannon to the term to the definition picture of Dalvin Cook in the dictionary beside him bang he's gone. And he's out of here. And a good angle from the safety coming across the field kept him out of the end zone, or it would have been one of those highlight plays that you saw over and over, Nick, over and over again. So, I would, I'm, I'm. It's a hard call, but I'm, t- I'm, I'm taking Dalvin Cook over Chubb. Yeah. The last one. Go ahead. You want to ha- hammer the Dalvin Cook thing for a second? I mean, I don't, I don't need to hammer anything, but I think I just like Nick Chubb better than Dalvin Cook, and There's so I think I, I think I'd take my Dalvin chair, and I think I'd go trade for Nick Chubb if I could I think I'd make that trade straight up I don't think you'd have to what maybe I don't know I don't know that I could right now honestly I don't think that the sentiment out there for Dalvin Cook isn't that strong like I don't understand why well because it's always what you do last week recency bias I got it that's just how that's the world we live in but you know Dalvin Cook was no stranger to injuries in college or some other off the field issues that I didn't necessarily like I looked past all that and I was in for him you know, I jumped on the train very late last year. Right, it took before me forever the to get you on the train. Right before the preseason started, and you know, and now I'm, I'm I traded a substantial amount to go get him uh, while he's still cheap in uh, in one dynasty league. And I I love the guy. I mean, I like to watch him play. He's he's a phenomenal runner. And he's, he's like just so better. electric. I think I just feel it in my plums <laughs> <laughs> i think i'd take nick chubb but i can't argue with you okay i can't argue with you well there's a two there's a two pick gap here if, if and by, carry on I, I think i take chubb over carry on too just because of this by the average i can't here, trust the lines to ever run the damn ball or do what's right oh i didn't say that in the meantime in the next couple of weeks the lions are going to do what they need to do to give the ball to carry on uh, you know, I, I, we'll see. There's, there's a, it's a lot safer. You got a lot better chance of Nick Chubb to get 20 total carries next week than you do of carry on to get 15 carries and five targets. But if you look at the game log on carry on, he's getting the targets every week. His lowest targets are like Chubb's best. And again, PPR, carry on's just a stud. It, the lines are a mess. And hopefully they use the last rest of the season to try to find their bright spots and carry on the bright carry on and, and Kenny Galladay. Mm-hmm. They're only two bright spots at this point. Right. Um, and as bad as it is, the, the Lions need to shore up some things over there this week because they've gotten to Stafford's been absolutely pummeled. He's gotten sacked like 16 times in the last two weeks. And you, you want to talk about a bright spot. Like one of the bright spots for the Lions is they don't absolutely have to have a quarterback. And if they don't start protecting this man, that might not be the case anymore. Um, so what last name in that trio you gave me before 
we get out you, we get out of here on Nick Chubb as you said uh James Conner. Mhm. And this is going to be real hot probably, but I got to keep Conner over Chubb. And it's there's Chubb obviously came into the league as a much more heralded touted uh, touted back. We and when I say we I mean us, but really Casey brought us James Conner last year before really the world knew who he was we got Casey got on here last February and told us about the stats and the rushing rates and and the and the touchdown rates that James Conner was putting up before he got sick in college that were on par with the Melvin Gordons of the world and the JGIs when he was crushing things at Boise State and all that good stuff James Conner if he had not gotten sick would have come into the league as a much more touted back mm-hmm. kind of like Chubb but he did, and he didn't, and he's here and now, and he's Le'Veon's given us this opportunity to see Bell. I mean, to see Connor, and now that we've seen Connor be a much above average NFL running back in maybe the best spot outside of the Rams, maybe even better than the Rams. Gurley just looks it makes it look like that good because the the fact yeah, that they don't even give it to him as when they as should many ride him even more like, yeah. right and and so but the Steelers throw it to Connor they throw it to Bell they throw it to D'Angelo Williams three years ago like there was a stat on 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 Twitter the other day and we don't need the stat because we've been playing fantasy football and we just know but it's good to see it like this the last five years the Steelers have had a top five running back in in fantasy it's been Le'Veon Bell three times and the year he got hurt it was D'Angelo Williams and then this year it's Connor because Le'Veon Bell's not there. The Steelers just it's fantasy football teat and they're milking it for running backs. Yeah. And it's the easiest job in the game. It's the easiest fantasy football points to get in the game. Solid the offensive Steelers line running back. Annually. Exactly. Ben Roethlisberger, Big one ben, of the greats. A B Antonio Brown and Juju. And Juju now. Yeah. yeah. It's just too easy. There's too many pieces. There's too many moving parts that are too good. And there's like you said, bare, there's just one percent chance Le'Veon is a Steeler next year. Maybe not. Probably even not one. even that. Probably so not even that. I'll take Connor too. Yeah, just I'll stick with it. It's at this point. Excuse me. I here. like Chubb more as a runner, but I think I, I got to take James Connor for the for the production. Right. Exactly. It just if you put Chubb on the Steelers, right, it's magic. Right. But Connor's there, and he's getting he's that magic right now. Right. 